Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and I cannot believe I've never reviewed this yet. At least that I know of. Because I did a very long review of The Blob, long time ago, it's still up. And uh, John Carver is the thing, I've reviewed a few times, but I'm going to do a new review this October, probably the last review, because it's my favorite, John, my favorite, not only my favorite John Carpenter film, but my favorite horror film of all time, The Thing. So that'll be the last review I do for October. But for the 80s remakes, I was... There's the big three. The Blob, The Thing, and The Fly. And I'm like, I cannot believe I have never talked about The Fly. Great two-disc set. I would say it's my favorite David Cronenberg film. <clears throat> I like Videodrome. I'm not a big fan of Stanners. I thought History of Violence was okay. Not a big fan of the other one. I forget what it was with Vito Warrenson. Just one is a big fan of that. But uh, this is definitely my favorite David Cronenberg film. Uh, I think it's an excellent remake. Like I said, great two disc. And one more can say about this film. It's Jeff Goldblum is a guy conducting experiment with teleportation. He's uh, telepods. Meets up with uh, Gina Davis. Romance blooms. He, Jeff Goldman does his experiment with teleporting. Unfortunately, there was a fly in there. So he comes out, and I think in the original film, you know, it pretty much the head switched, where the fly had the guy's body, and then the, the guy's body had a fly head, and then the fly had the guy's body. You know, help me, help me. But I love this film a lot more. I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of the original The Fly. I'm just, I'm not. Just like, I'm not a big fan of the original The Blob. I like the original The Thing from Another World, but I'm not a, big, I'm not a fan of the original The Blob or The Fly. I'm sorry, that's just not my cup of tea. Um, but um, he comes out seemingly normal, but then he starts changing. And that's what I love about this film, because I love Jeff Goldblum. Uh, I'm a big fan of him as an. I like his, his acting, you know, Jurassic Park, Independence Day, uh, even, hell, Transylvania. See, it's 5,000. I even like that movie. But I like Jeff Goldblum, and I definitely think this is his best performance. And you just really feel sorry for this guy because he starts falling apart, his, his teeth, his ear, just changing. And the way they did the makeup, and I'm sure you could take a lot into it, like, disease you know some people have put AIDS or any other kind of disease how your body just deteriorates from time to time and you know Gene and Davey's trying to help but you know there's not much she can do um, she had sex with Jeff Goldblum after he got out of the telepod so she's having a baby she finds out and you don't know is it alright is it not and she's scared so she wants to be rid of it um, I know you have this guy, God, what was his name, I can't believe I forgot his name, John Getz, who used to be with Gina Davis, kind of the kind of an asshole, but at the same time he's like, you know, if you need my help, I'll do it. And just memorable scenes that you remember, like for instance the arm wrestling scene where he's arm wrestling this guy Looks much stronger than Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum just breaks his fucking arm. <laughs> it was like, Ooh, shit. Uh, you have memorable lines. Like, uh, Jeff Goldblum's with a girl, and the girl is scared. And Jeff is like, don't be afraid. And then there's Gina Davis. Yes. Be afraid. Be very afraid. And that line can seem very cliche, or corny, or campy. But the acting pulled it off. And I will say this is probably my favorite Gina Davis performance as well, because you really buy the love story. You know, it has really fantastic makeup effects, and the story was straightforward, but the love story really worked. You really like these two people, you want these two people to get together, you want these two people to stay together, and it was heartbreaking to see these guys, how, you know, Jeff Goldblum's character sort of slowly, slowly went from man to this fly creature and this is metamorphosis you know day by day or 
I don't know if you want to say day by day or week by week. Uh, you know, stuff falling off to the point where he's just basically begging her, help me, help me be human. I think that's their old to the original, help me, help me be human. And it's like, what more can she do? And it really is just a very well told love story. It's a film that you just very wonderful performances by the two leads. Uh, great score by I believe it was Howard Shore, wasn't it? Da, 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 ba, da, da, da. Just an excellent score by Howard Shore. And I always forget that Mel Brooks produced this. Just Mel Brooks, you always think of Mel Brooks for comedies, but Mel Brooks helped produce this film. He was a big guy, you know, behind this film. I always forget that. Um, but then you get to the you get into the third act where he's really becoming this creature and pretty much kidnapping Gina Davis. And his idea is that he's going to use her and, you know, teleport. And he's pretty much pissed when he finds out that, you know, she was going to abort. And he's like, no, you know, don't, don't, don't kill our baby. You know, it's me in there. And he said much better than I could ever do it. I couldn't do it justice. But just you really feel the emotion behind it. And you just really feel sorry for these people. But it's done... With when you have grade A special effects, grade A acting, and a very talented director behind it, it works. It could be a crazy idea, but it will work very perfectly, in my opinion. I don't, I don't have any problems with the film, to be honest. It's one, it's not, it's one of those films I don't have any problems with. Hence why I'm stumbling. But it's definitely rated R as well. For instance, uh, John Guest tries to help her. You know, he has a shotgun trying to shoot these uh, telepods. And of course, you have the scene where the vomit on his hand and melts in his hand. And then, like, takes his leg and vomits on it. His vomit's pretty much, like, acid. Really gory, like, ooh, shit, you know? I mean, he's trying to do the right thing. But he's like, oh, you got his hand fucked up and his leg fucked up. And the final metamorphosis where Jeff Goldblum becomes the 1% fly with those, like, bug eyes and. I love that effect. I mean, they don't have it, I don't think, here for me to show you, but I love that effect. I really do. Um, yeah, you kind of do here, because you have this booklet. But yeah, like, certain stages that you go through, like there, and then this uh, final bug effect. really love that design. I think it's really extremely, extremely well done. Uh, they just did a fantastic job with this. I mean, the people behind it, it was just like, wow, these guys knew what they were doing. They just excellent stuff. And that last scene where she has the shotgun, she doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to do it. I know someone will be saying, oh, you're spoiling it. What's the fly from 1986? Why have you not seen this yet? Before I say anything, check it out. Why have you not seen the fly yet? Get the special dish. It has a great two disc. Just 20th century fuff face. I actually did something right. <laughs> but uh, that scene where, you know, she has a shotgun. She can't do it because she loved the guy. I love what they did here where they, they show that there's a teeny bit of humanity still in this even though it's completely like a bug. But he takes the thing, because she puts it down, and it takes it, and puts it to its head, and sort of leans, like, baiting her to do it, but not using words. And she's, no, no, I can't. But then, she looks, and then realizes she, like, that was handled very well. Because, it could, if you, if you fucked it up, it could be, okay, you have no more sympathy, for Jeff Goldblum's character. And that moment where he takes the gun as she lowered it and put it to her, I mean, t took the gun and put it to his own head, like, go ahead, kill me. And it makes you, once again, feel sorry for Jeff Goldblum's character. Like, this is tragic. 
And you don't want Gina Davis being a bitch like, wow, she killed him very quickly. But hesitating, but if you do it, if you hesitate long enough, you're like, you dumb bitch, shoot it. So it was long enough to show that she still loved him, but yet she had to do the right thing. And it worked very well. It worked very well. Um, I know there's a few deleted scenes that I'm fine that they were out. Like, I think there's one where, like, this doll-like creature and they, like, horribly kills it. This, uh, mutated creature. And I, I could agree with why they cut it out. It would make you feel less sympathetic for Jeff Goldblum's character. Uh, one scene that I would not have mind if they left in is, like, he's outside. And he, these, like, legs, like, grow out of his, like, hip. Um, the ending, I'm fine with the ending that they have. Like, the monster's dead, the movie's over. You know, you're... It's kind of like Rocky, the first Rocky. It sounds stupid, but... You know, you're riding that high where Rocky and Adrian hug. I love you, I love you too. You, you know, freeze frame, and then boom, end credits. You left on here. Here, it's like you're on this emotion high with... I don't want to kill you, I gotta kill you, blows his head up. And she's trying, and then boom, you know, duh, that great store. And it's like, okay, that's what you needed. You, know, you didn't need this ending where, you know, she's thinking about the baby. Is the baby going to fuck up or not? Um, that butterfly, basically what I'm talking about the ending is, I'm glad they didn't use that butterfly thing where she dreams that her baby will be like a butterfly. And I, it's a butterfly... Or what the fuck? Like, look like Tinkerbell or something. It did look like Tinkerbell to me. It really did. Like a b baby Tinkerbell. Or, I don't know. It just remind me of Tinkerbell. I know that sounds stupid. It doesn't look exactly like Tinkerbell. But I just like, really? What the fuck? Well, I guess I get the idea. But yeah, the, I'm glad they didn't use it. it. It was interesting to see on the deleted scenes. But didn't need to be in the film. Um, but... Wonderfully acted by the two leads. Excellent direction. Very capable makeup effects. Ooh, moments like the arm wrestling scene. Uh, a love story that really works. I think it's one of the great love story movies. As stupid as that is, if you see the film, I think you'll know what I mean. I mean, I'm sure most of the people have seen The Fly, but great fucking movie. Solid fucking movie. I have no problems with this film, The Fly. This is how a remake is done right. And I know at one time there was a talk of doing another Fly. I know this is The Fly too, but I'm talking about like, maybe David Cromer is going to remake The Fly again. I hope he changed his mind on that. Maybe he came to his senses, like common sense, said, no, nah, fuck that. Leave The Fly alone. You did it right. I don't need some CGI fucking Fly shit. That's what it would be. But either way, the Fly is excellent. Love the film. And next time I will talk about The Fly 2. See you then.